Welcome back to another Construct video, and in this video we're going to be making an idle coin catching game. Why we want to get this game to a really really good state today, the main focus of this video is actually creating the shop and looking at how we can create shops in lots of different ways inside of Construct. So let's get started. I started by just creating a really really simple level here, I've just got my player which has got the platform behavior and the scroll to behavior on, and I've got my ground which has just got the solid behavior. My level a little bit bigger, it's 3000 by 2000, and on the layer side, I've just added a background color. I'll also put a template of this in the description if you want to use my template, but really you can set up your own fairly, fairly quickly. So first we need to do is have a coin to catch. So we're going to insert a new object, scroll down to sprite, and we're going to create a coin. I'm just going to put import a coin in, but you can create your own or import one in from somewhere else. And this is a little bit big, so I'm going to just scale it down a little bit and put it in the top far level. In terms of behaviors, it just needs one, and we're going to add the physics behavior. This just means it will just fall down from the sky. So we can double click, and then we can move to our event sheet. So inside our event sheets, we're just going to add a simple system variable, scroll down, and we're going to do every X seconds. And by default, we'll leave this as one, but we are going to tamper with this to make the game harder to begin with and then as we upgrade this time will get faster. So we're going to start by taking our system requirements, we're going to create a new object and it's going to be a coin. In terms of the coin we're going to create it on layer 0, the x position is going to be random and it's going to be between 0 and layout width. And for our Y position, I like to have it about minus 50, so it's just above the screen. Not that the player will be able to see that high anyway, but if you had a jumping mechanic so the player could jump higher, they might see it spawn in. So having it spawn above the layout means they can't see that. And hit done. And that's it. So let's give it a test. So now you'll see that when the game starts, we've got coins that start falling from the sky at different points. And then the aim for the player is to catch them and get money from it. Now, the game is a little bit boring, so we're going to do a couple of things to make it a bit more exciting first before we start implementing the money system. So on the physics behavior, if we click here, we're going to actually increase the elasticity of it. This will make sense in just a second. This means, does it bounce? We're also going to change the collision mask to be a circle. So it acts like a circle, like we'd expect a coin to be. Finally, we're going to go to our grounds, edit behaviors, and we're also going to add the physics behavior on to our coins as well. Now, it's really important for the ground, once you've clicked on it, that you add this immovable. If not, the ground will fall down and the game doesn't work at all. So with that said and done, we can do a second test. And now when coins fall down, they'll bounce and then land. Now we can make that these destroy after a while, but I quite like the fact that the player has time to pick them up whenever they want. You also notice that the player is always behind the coins. That's not a problem because we'll make it so we can pick up the coins and they'll disappear on touch anyway. Now I'm going to move my player to the front, however, as I've created some extra ground since put my player down. That just means that my player is always on top there. So how can we implement some money into this now? So we're going to go to our event sheets. Add a new global variable, I'm going to call it money. I'm going to start with zero money. We're then going to add an event and say if the player is overlapping another object, and that's going to be our coin, then we're going to take our coin and destroy it. And we also want to take our system and add to money by one. And this is our game set up now. This is a working game where you can collect and catch coins. It's just not a very exciting one as the game goes, but now we can pick up the coins and they'll disappear. And we are getting money being added to our game. So let's add in our shop now. Now for our shop, we need to create a new layer. So first thing I recommend is renaming this one to game. And we're gonna insert a layer above and call this shop. I'm also going to lock my game layer so I don't accidentally move anything on there because I don't need to use it for a little while. 
Now, for our shop, we want it to be on screen at all times. Now, you can have your shop where you have to go to a certain location. If that's the case, then you don't need to do this next step. And this is with the parallax. Now, parallax is how that layer scales with the rest of the game. And if we set this to zero by zero, it means that this layer is self-contained inside this square and will always be visible on the screen at all times. So anything inside the square now on the shop layer will always remain on screen. And this is how we create really, really simple HUDs. If your shop is gonna be somewhere else in the level, then you just miss out this step. So we're going to zoom in now because we're working inside this small square up here where our camera is. And the first thing I want to do is I want to just put a little indicator of where the shop is. So I'm just going to call this shop, click anywhere. I'm going to add in a sort of blue look, maybe a little bit darker and just fill it in. I'm also going to set the transparency of this to 50% and I'm going to get it to fill this area. Now I recommend overlapping off the screen a little bit because we won't notice it anyway. And I find that it's a bit hard to position correctly at times. So now if we run this, this blue square, no matter where we go, will always be on our screen. And this indicates where our shop is. And once that's on there, we can play around with how big it needs to be. I think mine needs to be about half the size. Good, let's add in a text box now. So our text box is gonna tell us how much money we've got. And we're gonna place it in this top corner. Start by filling the area with the size that you want this to take up. So I want it to take up a fairly large area. Then we can mess about with stuff like size. We can then choose if we want it centered or not. So I want it to be left on the horizontal, but center on the vertical. And then by default text, we're going to do pound zero, dollar zero, whatever currency you're working with, just to indicate to the player that's money. I think this needs to be a little bit longer for later in the game where they can earn a lot more money. So that's all set up. We can go back to our event sheet and we can add money or whatever money we've got every time we overlap a coin. I'm actually going to go to add an event and do it every tick. Now, this is not the most efficient way to do it, but every time that we buy something, pip a coin, upgrade something, our money is going to change constantly. And it just means saving doing that line of code every single time we do a change to our money. So this is not the most efficient, but it is really fast and we're going for ease and quickness today. So we're going to go to our money, set text, and this is going to be set to pound sign and, and then money. Make sure you're on this one that's got the air font because that means global variable. And hit done. And now as we play our game, our money will go up every single time we collect a coin. And we've got the basics of our game started and then we're ready to move on to our online shop and get that working as well. So we're going to add free upgrades to our online shop. So let's start by just creating a button. I actually recommend staying away from using this button. Why it allows you to create a button, check if it's been clicked, add text to it. It does use HTML. The way that this works inside of Construct is it always renders it above everything else. So this is above everything else in our code. And this creates a little bit of a problem when it comes to displaying images above or below the text box. So stick to sprites, a little bit more work, but it does have more benefits. So this is going to be called shop and then speed. And this is going to be a modifier for how fast our player moves. So I'm going to just create a little style button and this is not going to be anything fancy. That will do for mine. But again, you can spend more time on this. And what I'm going to do is just put it where I want it in my game, like so, and a rough size for it. Now we need a new text box to be the text for the button. So we'll scroll down to text, and this is going to be button text. We're actually going to use the same sprite for all our text. We can use a really, really clever way to do this. So first of all, I recommend filling this to the size that you want it to be. And then we can change the size to about 30 is perfect. And then again, do you want it center aligned? Do you want it vertically aligned? So they're optional things. I think actually I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because some of my options might be a little bit big. So that's set up. 
We've got our text box on there. We've got shop speed. What do we need to do with this? Well, we're going to actually add what's called an instance variable. And this is going to be called upgrade cost. We want to control how much our button is going to cost to upgrade. I'm going to set this to 10 to begin with, upgrade our speed. I also need to add another object, and this one is going to be our mouse, because we need to detect if we're clicking on the button. If you are using a mobile application, you'll use the touch instead. They both work very, very similar. So with our mouse in place, we can now go to our button. Now what I recommend first is add a comment and give this a name, shop speed. This just allows us to separate our code. It doesn't cost us any more event. It just means our layout's much neater and easier to follow. So we're going to add a new event, and we're going to see if mouse is clicking an object, and we want to check for that button, shop speed. We also want to add another condition. We want to do system, compare variable. We want to see if our money is greater than or equal to to shop speed dot and then upgrade cost. This just checks have we got enough money to buy the next upgrade. Finally, we're going to add one more condition and we're just going to see if shop speed is overlapping another object and that's going to be our button text. Now, this seems like a weird one because our text is always going to be overlapping our button. But what this means is when we add more buttons and more button texts, it will only check for this particular sprite that's overlapping this particular button. So we're only ever changing the text for that particular button. So this is just a shortcut so you don't need a million different text sprites in order to do the same thing. So with that in place, what do we want to do if they have got enough money? So first thing we want to do is go to our system and we want to subtract from money and it's going to be from shop speed dot upgrade cost. So we first take away the money from the user so that money's gone and this will stop them from trying to cheat the system. Next thing we want to do is actually now change that price. So shop speed. I'm going to add to upgrade cost and what you can do with these shops is to save time and to make it so it's always flexible is we're actually just going to take the shop speed dot upgrade cost and times it by an amount say 1.2 now we also want to prevent this going into decimal places so whatever that value is we're just going to round it it's a really, really simple method to have a shop where the buttons always upgrade with themselves. We don't have to do much after that. So we've got that in place. We also need to then update our money, which is being done every tick. So finally, we just need to take our player. And we need to apply the buff to them. So set max speed. So I want this to be player dot platform because we're in the platform behavior dot set max speed and then again we can do a times so times 1.5 to make the player faster one thing i have missed is to do with the text for the shop so we're just going to take button text we're going to set text and this is going to be the name of the button so upgrade speed then the pound sign and we can then take shop speed dot upgrade cost. So it adds the cost at the end, so we're aware of that. So that should be all in place. And with this text, we also want to add this text when the button's created. So let's do that now before we forget. So shop speed, we want to say on created. We also want to check if it's overlapping the text. I'm just going to take that from this line above. And again, we've done the text now, so we can copy and paste it. So this should be it. This should be our shop set up. So when it's created, we set the text to be what we want it to be, which is upgrade the player speed and the cost that we've set up inside the instance variable. Then if we click on the button and we have enough money, it's going to take the money away that we've just paid for. It's going to change the value of that button next time to be more expensive. 
we're going to update the text of the button and then finally we actually give the player or change the game mechanics based on what they've just brought so let's give it a test when we're testing what i really recommend is let's just give ourselves some money just to make that testing a little bit faster so let's give ourselves 15. so this is how fast our player moves at the moment so it's taking a fair bit amount of time to get from one side to the other if we click the cost goes up and we are significantly faster now so we're able to get from one side of the screen to the other and by doing so be able to collect more coins faster so now we've got that let's add a second one in so i'm just going to clone this one here we've got shop speed 2 we're going to rename this to shop and then multi and this is going to be a multiplier for our coins so instead of getting one coin or one money per coin we now get two then three then four each time so i can drag this in put this next to it i also need a new text box so button text i'm going to drag that in and put that over the top and for this one we're going to add something a little bit different to it so we're going to edit our instance variables we're going to keep upgrade cost but this time i'm going to make it a little bit cheaper for us and i'm going to add a new instance variable which is called level and we'll start this at one this records what level we are currently at on terms of this upgrade and what i want to do is say that this maxes out around three times multiplier and then you can't upgrade anymore because in some cases we want to put a cap on how much the player can upgrade so we go to our event sheets i'm going to take all of this code here and copy and paste it and we'll do our changes so instead of calling shop speeds we're going to call it shop multi and again these code points just allow us to organize ourselves inside our code i'm going to click on the left hand side hold shift and click on the left hand side again then right click replace object and shop speed is the object we want to replace and replace it with shop multi now this is most of the work for us already and you see it's even checking for upgrade cost now, there's a couple of things we do need to do so first thing that we've got is how much do we want to round it by so i'm going to say that shop multi is a two times increase instead of a 1.2 because again it is quite a powerful upgrade I also need to change the text so instead of saying upgrade speed i'm going to have this say uh coins x and then i'm going to do a speech mark to close this an and sign and i can actually make use of shop multi dot level i'm going to do this level plus one and then i'm going to do my and sign again and a speech mark so a little bit complicated in terms of what we've just done there but what this means i'm just going to move my pound sign up by one what this means is it will say coins times two times three times four now because the level starts at one we want to add one to it so it says the next one's going to be times two so that's where the add one comes in there and we also need to make sure this text is copied over to the start of the button being created so we can get rid of the original one there and then finally, what do we want to do? Now for this one, we can't just simply change an action and improve it. We need to do a couple more steps. So first I'm going to do is add a global variable and this is going to be called multi and this is going to start at one. Then what I want to do is anytime I collect a coin, I'm going to add the value of one times the multiplier. And then finally, it just comes to removing this line of code and add an action to say system add to the multi by one each time. Now, before I do a test, I've just noticed a, a quick bug that we've got here. We're not increasing the level, so we need to make sure that we're also going to shop multi, scroll down and add to level by one to show we're growing the level. And this needs to be done before we set the text. So make sure that change is in your code as well so now we can do our test and it says coins times two is five now it says coins times three is going to cost me 15 you see at the moment i am getting two coins now i get three coins a time and if we get one more we can now move up to four times and the next upgrade is going to be five times 
So we're now getting a lot more coins and this makes the game move much faster. Now I want to put a cap on this and I want to say after three times we want to stop. That's max level, we can't continue. So we're just going to add a new event and we're going to say shop multi and we're going to check its level. So we'll compare instance variable to see if level is equal to and let's say three. Once it gets to level three, that's where we want to stop. We don't want to continue anymore. So we've got a couple of options. We can take our shop multi and we can destroy it. And that's the easiest way to get around it. Or we might want it to say max level to make the player really, really aware. So in this case, we're going to do something slightly different. First, I'm going to do is check again if we're overlapping text because we need to be able to change that text and that text only. So we're going to take our button text, scroll down and set text. And we're just going to have it say max level, like so. Nice and simple, but we need to be able to stop them from being able to activate this bit of code up here on line six. So all we're going to do is add one more condition to this. And we're just going to simply say shop multi, compare instance variable, level, I'm going to say is less than or equal to three. So this only works when the level is less than or greater than three. And then when we get to max level, we set max level. If you're going for the method of destroying the button, you do need to make sure you are destroying the text as well. If not, the text will be floating. So let's give this a test now. So again, we've got coins times two, coins times three, and then max level. Now currently our max level means that we can get three every single time. If I click once more or spam click it, you see our coins aren't going down and we're still only getting three every single time. So that's all set up and we now have two out of the three shop items that we're adding today. And the final one's going to be a little bit more complicated because you've noticed that we're using very, very clever tricks to make sure that we get the same result, but we times it by a certain multiplier, we times the money by a certain multiplier each time. But we might not want that. We might want to do different names for our buttons instead of upgrade speed, which is a little bit boring. We might want stuff that sounds a bit more exciting. Now, the easiest approach to do this is just add an event and say, if shop's been clicked and shop level equals one, then do this. And then we do the same for level two, level three, level four, level five. But the problem is this can soon get out of hand and on the free version limited to 50 events. This not only makes your code messy, but makes your most of your events gone. So I'm going to show you a way that we can do this in only a couple of lines. So we're going to add a new code comment. I'm not copying any of this because we're going to write out some new stuff. I'm going to call this shop and rock rate. This is how fast the coins fall from the sky. We also need a new button and I'm going to take the shop speed and clone it. And we're going to rename this to shop drop. And I'm going to change the instance variable and instead of upgrade cost, we still want level. Level is going to be important, but we don't want the upgrade cost because that's going to be managed in another place. I'm going to set the level to one by default and we can drag that in like so. The mine for some reason defaults back to zero so we'll put that at one there. Again we need to just put this where we want it and we also need to add our button text and put that over the top. So for this one I want to choose how much I'm changing the upgrade by, how much it's going to cost and what the text says each time. It's really important for when we're doing stuff like the how often the coin spawn, because we can have it set to five seconds and four, then three, then two, then one. But after one, we don't want to jump to zero because that will cause loads of issues. We want it to drop maybe to 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0.5. And even when we get to the bottom, we might want to only change it by 0 0.001 when the play gets further into the game. So how do we control this? Well, what we need is to right click on objects, add a new object type, and we need an array. And this array is going to be called drop shop upgrades. Now, 
anybody who's not used arrays before or has not got any computer science experience, this is just a way that we can store multiple values of data in one place. So we're going to scroll down, add a brand new event system, and we want to do an on start of layout. Now for this, we're going to start by getting our drop shop array, setting the size of it, and we want this to have a width of three, and then how many upgrades we want. I'm going to set this to five upgrades just for now. But again, this is something you can edit. Now, what I really recommend when dealing with arrays is add a code comment and work out what your three columns are going to be. So I'm going to say that column zero, because we start from zero, is going to be the item name. I'm then going to say column one is going to be the upgrade cost. And column two is going to be the change in coin drops. So how fast coin drops. So with that set up, we can now add our first part. And again, I recommend adding a comment. First of all, I'm going to call this level one. And this just needs to go just below where we set the array size. So a little bit of setting up required. This is not needed, but again, it's to make your life easier. So how do we set up level one? So we're going to go to our drop array and we're going to set X and Y because we're dealing with two positions. So we're going to start with X zero, which we know is the item name. We're going to then have this set to the first level. Now by default, it's good to start from zero. I'm going to set it to one because I think it's easy to understand. So this is going to be level one and then the value. So what's the item name going to be? I'm going to say it's going to be called light rain. And it's in speech marks because it's text. So that's the name of my first level, light rain. For the next one, we're going to copy and paste this first one, double click, and we're dealing with one now, which is our upgrade cost. We're still on level one. And then this is the value of how fast our coins drop. So I'm going to say my game is going to drop every three seconds to begin with. So level one will drop it to every two seconds a coin will drop. So that's the first level done. It is a little bit of a complicated method of doing it, but it means that we are only taking up one event to get all our levels done. Let's do the second level together. So I'm going to hold shift to highlight all this area and copy and paste. I'm going to change level one to say level two. And for the first one, X will always stay the same now. The only thing we're changing is Y. So Y is now the same as the level. And now the value, instead of light rain, I'm going to say heavy rain. Instead of costing four, again, the X stays the same, the Y jumps up to two. Instead of costing four, it's now going to cost nine, which again is a calculation we couldn't really do before. And then finally, X stays the same, Y goes up by one. We're now going to have one second per coin falling. And let's do one more level and we'll do this one together because I understand that this section is a bit more confusing. Level three. Again, X stays the same now. Y goes up by one. Instead of heavy rain, we'll call this storm. X stays the same. Y goes up by one. How much is it going to cost now? It's going to cost 16. And again, X stays the same. Y goes up by one. And then this time it's going to be 0.5 between coin drops. So this sets up our table. Now we actually need to implement this into our code. So first I'm going to do is add a new event. I'm going to say on shop drop. I'm going to check it's on created. We're also going to add another condition. And this is going to be shop drop is overlapping another object and our button text. We'll start by setting up our text first. So because the array takes a little bit of time to create, what I've noticed is you do need to add a very small pause of about 0.1 seconds at the start of your code. If you don't have this, your text might not update properly. So add that short pause in and then we can set the text of button text. So scroll down, 
set text. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing, but do not worry, stick with me, it is worth it. So we're going to do drop shot upgrades, which is the name of the array dot at. Now it says what value do we want to get from this? So the X is the column name. So we've got item name, upgrade costs, changing coin drops. This is going to be the item name. So we're going to write zero here. Then we're going to do a comma. And then we want to get the current upgrade level. So shop drop dot upgrade or level. There we go. So this is saying that I want to get whichever row we are currently on in terms of our level. We're on level one, so we're going to have light rain. We can then do our and sign in speech marks as a pound sign. And then and sign again. And now we need to get the cost of this next upgrade. And it's the same thing again. So it's drop shop upgrade dot at. In brackets, we're going to have the column. So upgrade cost is column one. So we're going to write one here. And then again, we're going to do the name of the shop. So shop drop dot level. And this does take a little bit of time to understand and write. But the good news is, is once you've done it once, that's it. It's done. And this is what makes this shop really, really good. Because once you've set this up, we just need to add some more rows to it. And it does whatever we need it to do. So that's done. So let's first test that that works on its own. So you see light rain and it costs four. Very similar to what we had before, but instead of having it where it gets the text from what we've put here, it's based on whichever row we're currently on. Now let's get the main part of the shop working. So we're going to say mouse on object clicked. And we're going to say shop drop, which is the name of this particular shop that we're using. We're also going to add another condition. Just like we did before, we're going to check if we've got enough money. So compare variable money and we're checking if it's greater than or equal to. And again, we're not just checking a default value this time that just slowly multiplies. We want the exact value that's in the table. So again, we do drop shop upgrades, which is the name of the array that we set up dot at. Inside the brackets, we want the upgrade cost, which is column number one. And then we want drop or shop drop. And I think my variable names have not helped make this any easier. Dot level. Close the bracket and hit done. So this now checks we've got enough money. And then finally, our final condition, as always, is going to see if shop drop is overlapping our text to say that we want to use that particular text. If we've done all of that, we can now get started with our next part, which is actually getting this to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is do system, subtract from money, and unfortunately it's the same thing again, it's the name of the array, dot at, open bracket, then the column we want, which is upgrade cost, and then the shop drop rate dot level. So we're taking money away. We're taking the money away from the current level we're on. We're on level one, so we take away four. So that's done. We can actually apply what we want to apply now. So we want to do how fast the money rains. So for this, we actually need a brand new global variable to auto control all this. So we're going to do drop rates. And again, I'm going to start as that free. And let's put that at the top. And then instead of every one second, I'm going to turn this to drop rate. So down in our code below, we're going to go to our system. Set value of drop rate. And again, this will be the name of our array. Dot at the column that we want, which is now column two, change in drops. And then we want our shop drop dot level. And again, this is which one we're currently in. Now if that's up, the final bits are nice and simple. We're just going to take our shop drop, scroll down and add to level by one. 
And then finally, we just need our text again. So we can take this text and paste it below. And that's it. That is the complete part of this whole shop done in just three lines of code. And again, every time we add one to level, it's which level are we dealing with in terms of values. I've only done three columns, but you can have a lot more columns if you want to control more variables at the same time. Maybe you're doing a more um, RPG style shop, you might want to do how much items the person's got left in their shop. Maybe they can only sell you five gold. So you'd want another one for how many gold you've got left. So you see we've got 50 and coins are dropping, but they're not dropping nowhere near as fast as before because now we've said they only drop every three seconds. We're going to click. Now it says heavy rain and they should be dropping slightly more often. It should be every two seconds. Nothing massively noticeable yet. We've now got storm is our next upgrade. So now we should be dropping even faster than before. So every one second now that is a bit more noticeable than what we had before. And then finally, if we go to storm, we're now on the fastest one, which was every half second, which again is now starting to be quite noticeable. Now, the final thing that you notice is that we are on zero dollar zero. This is because the arrays run out now. We've got no more levels, so the array defaults to zero. Now, you've got to be really careful with your game on this, because if we click this and wait three seconds, all of the coins will come down because now they're spawning every zero seconds. And why this is really satisfying for our game, it does break the point of our game, because now we can upgrade everything to max. We can actually get loads and loads of coins really fast. And again, our game doesn't work the way it's intended anymore. So it's just the same thing that we had before with checking for max level. We just need to do the same again. So when our array does reach max level, we stop it from carrying on. And this way we avoid those particular bugs. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video today and got a bit of an idea of how you can start implementing some shops into your games. Let me know if you've enjoyed this style of video. If you have, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.